I can hear now. Ah, there we go. I can hear you. Fine. <laughs> um, should we start? Was how we go on like this? Yeah, I, I I've pressed record already, so um, it's recording. Okay, great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to um, see the outside world through your windows. Where are you? I'm uh, today. I'm in Catania. Uh, most of the day I spend in Catania, Palermo, in Sicily, and uh, next week we go to the north on Tuesday. And uh, because here is Easter on Sunday, so I don't know. The Sicilians are really attached to Easter celebrations. I want to. I want to cover this part. You know, I want to. I want to be here and see. I'm curious. It's a really unique time. Great. So I have to make you four questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I was thinking what to ask you. Actually, we yesterday was driving. What are you going to ask to Mikhail? Um, so because uh, I have to get the background. Uh, anyway, this every day in the radio and uh, in the, in Italy we have this uh, this moment we talk about uh, this these things called biopower, uh, biopolitics, which is uh, started from this Giorgio Agamben uh, philosopher that uh, in, uh, at the end of February start to uh, questioning about the usual, the use, the use of the power from the government. Um, so biopower is something uh, Michel Foucault, Michel Foucault um, brought up uh, um, years ago. And this idea of the involvement of the government uh, uh, using their political power in every in our daily life, uh, the managing the, the management of the population, which means surveillance, separate, separate separations, uh, um, inspection, racism. I mean, think about the I don't I don't know if you heard the the Chinese walk in London uh, be beat up just because they were Chinese. Uh, um, so basically. When there is the 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 naked life on the stake, uh, the government can take care, take care. That's the, actually the argument: is is taking care of us, or is managing us using a, a extreme abuse of power? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking about you because of South Africa apartheid, uh, separation walls. Uh, and now we are confining walls so without even uh, arguing that. Uh, we're just taking, uh, you know, that was my question for you, the first. Yeah, I think it's such a, it's maybe, maybe the most, I mean, it's a great question. It's maybe the most interesting aspect of this beyond the immediacy of like, uh, you know, people dying and lives changing. You know, we're all very aware of that, but like that question and it, it resonates so much in South Africa but almost um, maybe better to start in America because that's where the crisis is now at its biggest. And, and this, this kind of crazy, and, and also because the craziness of government is so transparent there, you know, this kind of, um, what do they call it? They call it uh, socialism for the, for the rich and the banks and kind of uh, neoliberal capitalism for the poor. So, when 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 these causes come up in so-called no, normal life, you know, there's never enough money for Medicare for all. There's never enough. It would destroy the economy to to do all these things that these crazy socialists are saying. Um, and then when when some, in a crisis like this happens, they basically uh, using socialist principles to bail out the big companies and the banks. And so there's there's you know that incredible irony in terms of economics and government that this kind of moment really just accentuates. And in South Africa, there's something similar because um, people on the, on the left, and, and it's also really funny here because the kind of so-called extreme left are, are kind of, uh, I agree with a lot of their principles in terms of kind of socialism and, and, and nationalization and things like that. But then there's also a very difficult popular, popularist element to, to, to the extreme yeah. left or the far left. And they've been calling for years for us to, um, to, to use quantitative easing to kind of um, take care of some of our social problems and spend money on infrastructure and houses for poor people, et cetera, et 
cetera. Everybody says, again, they're crazy. You know, we can't do that. It will destroy the economy with the ratings agency and everything. The moment this crisis hits, they found a way of, of, of doing that with um, government bonds. So, um, yeah, this, 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 well, I, th I think your question was about like what, what this crisis is allowing government to do that might like kind of save lives, but actually be quite kind of scary in terms of um, surveillance and control. But it's will, will, will they, you know, I remember it's a stupid, stupid example. I remember when they, they start to ask us, I never smoke in my life, but anyway, when they start to ask to stop to smoke, at the beginning it was like some resilience, etc. But then it became really normal. It gets, oh yeah, whatever, it is like that. Mm. Uh, so in the same way, do, the question here is like, how will be his in the future to just ask anything to the population and just obey? Or just let, okay, of course you can surveil, uh, surveillance, uh, apply surveillance to me anywhere I go, because already we already did that. It's like a aftermath. Uh, after the war, is, I don't want to uh, uh, take a comparison to this, this virus with the war, absolutely not. Uh, but is, there is an aftermath. Is the, uh, the question was, what do you see the aftermath? There is the, 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 the invitation. There is these, uh, I mean, I, that is my big, beside the economic crisis, uh, I, I'm, I'm really curious how they're going to deal with the communication. Because... Yeah. Uh, there is no questions now. We not even say, "Do I have we, why we are forbidden to be free now?" Um, well, so easily. That, of course, I stay home. Like nobody questioning that. Well, the smoking is so interesting because our government response has been, compared to most countries, pretty good in terms of lockdown early, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the one thing that's been very controversial is. Um, we can only leave our homes if we work for the emergency services or to go buy food or, or go to the doctor. Um, we can go buy food in the supermarkets, but we cannot buy alcohol or cigarettes. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Here, the same, like uh, you, one day you can go, if your ID card is uh, even, the last even number is even, so today is even, I can go to the supermarket. It's become so normal and so in order. It's like it's a dream for a government to have such a order in the street, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, and it's on contaminating. A, yeah, on a societal level, the alcohol thing is really interesting because we have huge amounts of people who die from road accidents because people drink and drive a lot still here. A lot of domestic violence, um, violence against women and children is alcohol related. And, and people are like getting so angry with the government for using this as an excuse. I mean, the government does have like some logic to it in that the less people are drinking, the less people go to emergency services in the hospital. Therefore, the hospitals are freed up to deal with COVID-19. So there is an argument. Yes, yes, yes. But it's also like, if you're going to make that argument now that it's going to be better for everybody, then the logic actually is that it would be better to, to ban alcohol at all times. Of course, that's crazy. And, and, but I think, I think it really like kind of illuminates what you're saying about this tension around, around, around what is an emergency. Also, because, you know, South Africa is a very, you know, very divided country and, and emergency you know, you could describe our normal non-COVID moment in terms of, like I said, violence, in terms of people dying, in terms of poverty, in terms of homelessness, you know, very yeah, similar yeah. to all these emergencies. And that's, yeah, that's really interesting is, for me, is where the, the whole world going forward can kind of get some kind of perspective on what what is emergency? In fact, what is in fact the, right, the argument of Ag Agamben was really, in these days, was this, uh, I mean, uh, a society living in a permanent state of emergency is not a free one. That mm -hmm. basically his statement is that, the resume of that. So, I don't know, was, uh, was, was, was the first question. Cool. The, the second question is like, uh, you lived the part of your life in Italy. And... Uh, you know, I want just simply to hear from you, completely change the subject, actually. Uh, how was uh, your memories uh, of, uh, of the good times, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever yeah. you did? 
Well, I think about I think about that. It's a, a, personal, it's a personal question to yeah. talk about your you and your work. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I I am. Um, I have thought about it a lot, especially early on in the crisis when it was mainly Italy that was in the news and Northern Italy in particular. And as you know, I was in Treviso, yeah. which was such yeah. a complicated place to live because um, on the one hand, it doesn't even felt like I, I lived in Italy because I was at Fabrica with all these people, you know, young people from the international all over the place. So we all spoke English to each other um, yeah. and, and uh, it was really a bubble. On the other hand, you know, Treviso is such a, a right-wing place and, and you're very aware of, um, you know, there was this great um, uh, place we used to go get um, uh, pasta um, near Fabrica and there were, the guy was so friendly and lovely and always nice to us. There were pictures of Mussolini on the wall and we used, oh to, we used to talk about going to get some fascist pasta. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, um, and, and I think, I mean, may, I, I don't know if you agree, and your perspective is much, much more interesting and in-depth, but maybe Italy is, is one of the most interesting places in the world right now, not just because of COVID, but because of having this incredible history and infrastructure um, and kind of industrialized um, economy, and yet really being kind of, you know, uh, economically, the whole kind of credit crisis and all the refugees coming kind of in this, in this funny, a bit like South Africa, maybe in this funny in between, between the developed and the kind of developing worlds. And they're kind of coming together, maybe in Italy in, in, in these times. Yeah, there is a moment, uh, I don't know, I still, you know, is a lot of hate uh, for, for, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful place to live, I have to say, and uh, and but of course there is the problem you just mentioned. I don't want to go too much in the detail. <laughs> okay. then it, I, I pull it out uh, and then uh, get to the wrong direction. Okay. Okay. The other so anyway, you have you have good time in Italy, you know. Beside beside the food, that of, of that is uh, easy going. Of course. Okay. Yes, good. Uh, the other question was uh, something. Uh, about creativity, the, I was the uh, the hospital the other day, and I was working with a, a good doctor, um, uh, an immunologist, that specialized in malaria, HIV, and now is in a full-on COVID-19. Uh, he told me this, you know. I say, Alex, I never saw something like that in my life, uh, and and uh, we uh, uh, we don't know how to do that. We try. There are different theories. We try the anti-malaric one the, and then but they say uh, I have to use creativity and uh, to every day and I don't like creativity in science uh, in fact this theory is uh, uh, sorry there is an ambulance passing by no in fact uh, as every day is like tones um, in fact you hear me well okay in fact is the the is a uh, just a second sorry yeah, scan. Otherwise, okay. So basically, every so the idea is he is using uh, um, uh, another. How you call it when your your skin? I forgot in English. How you call it when your skin is red and you have to take off the red of the skin, like uh, the like a, uh, like a rash. No. Yes. Like. A, uh, Inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, how you call it? Anti-inflammatory. Oh, anti-histamine. Uh, anti-inflammatory, yeah, I, I don't know, we call it in Italian anti-inflammatory. Basically, like uh, you, so because they say that the virus is too smart and it's not that aggressive, but uh, it's complicated, uh, uh, the, our immune system gets crazy, get it on tilt. So it's trying to, a different uh, approach to fighting this. But then going back to a creativity, uh, when I went back to my car and I say, but what about all the science, uh, scientists that uh, use their creativity, creativity uh, like Galileo, all the, the Tesla, uh, the people who have never been understood. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been, uh, Galileo have been accused and processed and, and I think it's not been killed. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to go to detail of history. I'm not prepared for that. 
but all these kind of signs they went off road with their creativity and their intuition and discover years before things that uh, then later we recognized in art uh, same thing we can do the parallel like uh, uh, okay the most obvious is van gogh or um, you know uh, and on and on i, I, I can name it that how does it work in art this intuition that's not be understood uh, that uh, keep that uh, keep believing in your research uh, no matter whatever the market is giving you the right or not or you just pour in your studio uh, how does it work for you this yeah i mean i think a lot about i think it's a cliche to say this but it's something that I think about a lot, which is that it's kind of one of the great tragedies of the world that since the Renaissance, since Leonardo really, there's been this separation between the arts and the sciences, you know, where um, the two kind of ways of thinking are, are seen as kind of opposite and contradictory. And like you say, there's so much creativity in, in scientific thinking and art is not, as we all know, art or photography or whatever, is not just like being whimsical and crazy in your studio. It's a huge discipline for you to be out there every day, or even like for me to wake up every morning to do a task in the studio, you know? So, um, and, and, and a lot of it is kind of analytical thinking. Um, so I, I, I was, I was a, like a science nerd when I was in high school. Like I was like doing, biology projects and you know going to science fairs and stuff like that and so there's always been a part of me that's like really wanted to find ways of like integrating the ways of thinking and there's I think there are actually a number of opportunities um, to do that where that people on residencies link um, artists and scientists now even in Magnum we're doing this um, project um, uh, with um, BCG and um, MIT and oh. I will I was on like a, a Zoom call yesterday for a couple of hours with a, a scientist from MIT who had used a, um, a device, an ECG device that she built to um, analyze my stomach um, electrical activity um, in response to kind of psychological things. And we working together to put this together into the, some sort of video presentation. So um, I guess, uh, I guess the 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 the, the more the most important thing is to like find ways to break down these categories. Like even within art, of course, like there's all the stupid ones like photography and art. And yeah, yeah. But on a bigger level, like that we uh, that we that we see these these contradictions and silos between humanities and hard sciences. And yeah, it's just it's just kind of crazy. And sorry, I don't know if I'm answering your question. So no, but let's say if you would be a doctor, would you use the traditional, okay, of course it's different, there. you have a, a, a person to save, uh, but I say this person is not in a, in a really an emergency status. You would try a different approach to treat the person uh, or go to whatever everybody does, give, they give in this anti-malaric uh, yeah. uh, drug. What do we do? What do we what do? You do? <laughs> well, it's funny because I have a complicated history with like, I was going to be a doctor. I was registered to study medicine and then changed my mind at the last moment. My mother's That's a doctor. Perfect. So, <laughs> so it's all, but at the same time, like, I also grew up like in a Rudolf Steiner school, Wardorf kind of situation. So, you yeah. know, I was exposed to a lot of homeopathy and all this stuff, which now I'm like so, like, I've gone so far away from because, like, for me, alternative like has so many of its own dangers and kind of its own dogmas. So I'm very, very suspicious of anything that, that presents itself as a kind of, especially in relation to medicine, as kind of alternative. So it's complicated. And, and like, I guess that's the thing is that all these things in the extremes can be very destructive, I guess, as, we, as we're seeing in the world right now. Could be, yeah. Okay. Okay, you answer. Simple question, where it was uh, um, the other question. Okay, uh, what, do you do, what did you eat last, last night? Because Africa, you know, is always this kind of, uh, I want to yeah. just use a joke. You know, I, I can imagine what uh, someone I'm eating in London, but not in, uh, in uh, Jobo. Yeah. 
What did you eat? It's not going to be any very interesting at all. I mean, we we so um, I had this I had this call with this 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 woman from MIT who's in uh, Boston, okay. and then uh, I had a drink with my wife uh, in, outside on the veranda, and then we had dinner Zoom dinner with. Um, Gwydion and Masasa, who are my good friends who live maybe two kilometers away. So often we would, um, she's an actress and he's a, a television producer. Um, and often he, they love to cook. Um, uh, and so we were going to do this thing. He's a very, very good uh, chef. So he was going to like um, kind of tell us what ingredients to buy and like teach us yeah. how to cook the, the meal. But we, 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 didn't get around to that. So we just made our, our fish and our salad and they had their dumplings and we just ate together. Fish, fish sorry, what you said, fish? Well, we, we just had fish and salad and they had like ah, a, fancy, salad, okay. a fancy dumpling that he cooked. <laughs> okay, okay. And tonight uh, you have something, no? Tonight will just be us eating. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna eat uh, uh, sardines tonight. <laughs> I love the recipes you sent. I actually, I must try them. I must try your recipes. Uh, right. Few were really improvisation. I was on the, on the car, text, texting, try to imagine the other one. Uh, but it's funny. It's, it would be fun to do it something with that. Um, you, um, you went on the call on Monday, right? The, the, the big call with all the photographers. I, wa I wasn't because I was in, a, in the street. I was, uh, I was, a uh, where I was? I was with the doctor inside, he's going inside houses for, to do the tampon. Yeah. Uh, well, was, um, oh, well, first of all, just to say, I mean, the work you're doing is unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, I mean, of course, we don't want to be like this. Uh, it really was thank unbelievable. You. And also just like very nice to see that some of us are out and really working and making making work, it was fantastic. And then what I was gonna say about is, actually there was a very nice vibe in the Zoom meeting. There was like maybe 50, uh, no, not 50, maybe 30 people on it. And Raymond Depardon was there, and Gilles was oh, being nice. so, Gilles. Yeah, Gilles. Yeah. So it actually, um, it felt like in amongst all this craziness, you know, maybe there's something good happening that's- um, Yeah, must be. Yeah. We have to keep it. <laughs> like yeah, this. yeah, absolutely. And um, I'll talk about numbers. <laughs> just yeah, so yeah. No, no, there was something. There was something very nice that um, you know. Let me just uh, let me just stop the recording. Uh, okay. Hello, hello. Hope everyone is safe and healthy. Uh, thanks to Alex and Mikhail for the last conversation. And here we do the lottery for the next one. This photographer will ask the questions. Christina the middle. And this photographer will answer. Thomas Dvorak. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> 